Here's a video that was requested by you guys. In case you didn't know, you can send me video requests on my Discord server under the channel Future Video Ideas. I look at everything that is sent to me, and sometimes I select from one of those videos to respond to. Anyway, this one's about climate change, or so that's what the title seems like it'll be about, but before we get into it, I'd like to allocate some time to mention today's sponsor, NordVPN. Nord is an encryption service that hosts over 4,000 servers in 62 countries. With a very user-friendly interface, you can easily protect your browsing in one click. It works with most operating systems, including Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. If you've wanted to feel safe while browsing or to simply watch a TV show not available in your region, NordVPN is your solution. Nord has become very important to me when I leave the country, especially when managing my YouTube stuff and for general entertainment. At nordvpn.org slash stick, you can use the code stick to get a discounted deal of $2.99 per month for a three-year plan, plus one month for free. That's nordvpn.org slash stick. Thank you to Nord for sponsoring this video, and without further ado, let's get right into it. Truth about climate change. Look up the word geoengineering. When you look up the word geoengineering, it will take you to all the specific things that you need to know about how your planet is being climate controlled. Climate control sounds bad, doesn't it? Ooh, the evil government is controlling our climate for some reason. From the perspective of a paranoid conspiracy theorist, I can see why the word climate control can sound bad. But listen, it's not. When a claim is being made like this, it's important to go in and actually understand what the climate control is all about. Perhaps it's for a good reason. Geoengineering is the process of altering our climate for various purposes, the big one being to combat climate change. Now, I've explained this a lot in my videos already, so in short, man-made global warming is happening. The release of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere is warming our climate, and that could lead to detrimental effects in the near future. To combat this, we can alter our climate and cool it down using various geoengineering methods. Honestly, it's a very clever thing to do, and as long as we've extensively studied the consequences and figured out the politics behind it all, I'm very down for more geoengineering. But I myself do see this more as a temporary solution to buy us more time. Ultimately, it is important that we switch to more renewable energy sources. But that's just my opinion. What's your opinion on this? They're doing it, obviously by chemtrails, but don't look up the word chemtrails because chemtrails was created by those people that do the geoengineering as a conspiracy theorist. I'm kind of tired of this claim that chemtrails, which doesn't exist, is being used for geoengineering purposes, which is a good thing. Chemtrails are just contrails. And you know, I find it very interesting how so many people who believe in chemtrails are always trying to tie it in with geoengineering. Yes, one of the methods of geoengineering involves injecting aerosols into the atmosphere to increase the Earth's albedo, but that's still different than contrails. I feel like one person looked it up, found an article on geoengineering, and immediately equated it to the non-existent concept of chemtrails, and then the echo chambers took it from there. The only real similarity between these two are the fact that things are being injected into the atmosphere, I guess, and the fact that the concept of contrails is being put to good use. Upon further reading, you can find the exact reason behind this activity. But yet conspiracy theorists will keep trying to tie it in somehow with chemtrails. It's ridiculous. Now, it's not just the aeroplanes that are spraying your atmosphere to change the climate to the desires of corporations. What would corporations want to do with changing the climate? I mean, maybe some ski resorts would want to make it colder, I guess? So if these are corporations doing this, that means the government isn't? Are they spraying the air without the government noticing? In that case, how could they have missed it? I mean, literally, there are a bunch of Wikipedia articles on it, and you can see contrails in the sky. Your logic doesn't make too much sense here. The second thing that you need to know is about ice plus, ice minus. Seldomly is ice plus, ice minus ever spoken about. It's not spoken a lot about because it's a specific strain of bacteria. The average person doesn't know anything about it, so let me give a rundown on what ice plus and ice minus bacteria are. Ice plus specifically refers to a surface protein found on Pseudomonas syringae. This protein allows H2O molecules to grip on and essentially form ice crystals. This can significantly change the temperature at which water around it freezes. It freezes the surface of a plant leaf, for example, damaging it and allowing the bacterium to invade. That's ice plus. Ice minus bacteria is also Pseudomonas syringae, but it's a different strain that doesn't have the surface protein, thus making them unable to artificially create ice in non-freezing conditions. Obviously, after studying this bacteria, humans can take advantage of the ice plus protein. For example, it can be used to make artificial snow. Alright, now that you know what ice plus and ice minus is, let's see what this guy has to say about it. But you go to any meeting where you've got geoengineering experts and climate control experts, and you mention this word geoengineering and ice plus ice minus, you watch them get up and leave the room immediately. I mean, have you ever been to one of those meetings and witnessed that happen firsthand? Or is this just speculation just like everything else in your video? Anybody that is controlling your climate quite literally is in control of your climate. Wow, I never knew that if you're in control of the climate, you're in control of the climate. 
So what are these two words, ice plus and ice minus? Well, it turns out in the 1960s, they were able to determine what causes water to freeze at zero degrees sea level. Well, it's very simple. It's a microbe. It's a microbe, a living micro microbe, that determines the freezing point on this planet of water. That is simply not true. Water freezes at zero degrees without any outside influences and the pressure is at one atmosphere. It's not determined by the presence of ice plus bacteria. This is easy to disprove. Your drinking water, for example, is distilled. There are no ice plus bacteria in it, and yet you can still freeze it if the temperature is at or under zero degrees Celsius. Ice plus bacteria does affect water and ice more than we think though. For example, it can be found in natural snow, but it only affects the water in which its surface protein has contact with and can increase the freezing point of ice by about a few degrees, depending on the strain. The thing is, I don't know why I brought up ice minus bacteria too since it lacks the protein and can't accelerate the freezing of water. So what they did is that they engineered these microbes to let the water freeze at the temperature that they want and it has a range of it. Yes, humans can indeed take advantage of the ice plus protein such as freezing water for ski resorts, but the way you're talking is as if the government or corporations are controlling water for a more devious purpose, which simply isn't the case. There is indeed a case in which ice minus bacteria were being engineered for the purpose of protecting crops. That's sort of irrelevant to this conversation so I won't get into the details. But yeah, ski resorts would use this specific protein but there's not really any other water controlling activities that I'm aware of that is supposedly bad. Take, for example, the artificial snow that you find on skiing slopes. Well, this is usually determined by them spraying ice plus. Sometimes you may see this in winter time. You throw a bucket of uh, salty water over it and it doesn't melt, it stays. That's ice plus. Or sometimes the ice seems to be so weak it seems to melt even though it's minus two degrees. That's ice minus. Absolutely not. Ice minus is simply the same bacteria, but without the ability to crystallize water molecules into ice. That's it. They don't work in the reverse direction. You yourself linked a Wikipedia article on ice minus. Did you simply not read it or something? They're spraying this in the atmosphere. No, they're not. Not that I'm aware of at least, but feel free to provide a source to prove that claim. I went to look at the sources you linked down below, but there's only a Wikipedia article about ice minus bacteria and a few articles about climate activists getting arrested and whatnot. There really isn't too much substance down there, so this makes me believe that you're just making wild claims here. The spraying is not just going on in the airplanes, ladies and gentlemen. It's going on with ships. Ships also put it out and they're spraying it in all manner of forms. They're putting it into your water supply, so on and so forth. Wild claims upon wild claims. This is what it is to be a conspiracy theorist, ladies and gentlemen. I would love to hear your specifics on how corporations benefit from releasing ice plus into the water or the atmosphere. Please, I'm dying to know. Luckily for us, anything that dangerous like vaccines, the bubonic plague, all has to have a cutoff switch. And that cutoff switch for ice plus, ice minus is what they call the seawater, freshwater barrier. Because ice plus, ice minus can't survive seawater. A lot of bacteria indeed cannot survive in salty environments. That's why your sweat, for example, is salty. It creates an osmotic pressure that essentially dehydrates bacteria and kills them. But you know, it depends on what kind of bacteria you're looking at. I'm not an expert on the Pseudomonas syringae bacterium, so I can't say for sure if this claim is correct or not. But either way, this is just a build up on multiple layers of speculation. I don't know where you got the idea that everything has to have a cutoff switch or how this barrier of fresh and salty water would help at all. Maybe we'll find out. All of this engineering can go horribly wrong. As a result, there are fail-safe devices in place. I know quite a lot of them for the language, for the climate control, for the diseases, the vaccines, and so on and so forth. Okay, okay, so from my understanding, these cutoff switches are man-made, created by the same people who created the ice plus and ice minus bacteria. Still, I don't see how the barrier in the ocean could help at all. Let's say they spray ice plus all over the atmosphere. How would a body of water help, say, the bacteria's effect on increased hailstorms? And now you've raised many other questions. What's the cutoff switch for vaccinations? Is there an injection you could get that removes the vaccine out of your bloodstream? Now let me get you to the attention of what is going on on a global scale when people are protesting the dangers of climate control. Well, the climate control people are not aware that your climate is being controlled. So you're saying that the people controlling the climate aren't aware that they're controlling the climate? 
So when you are protesting, what you are doing, ladies and gentlemen, children as well, all over the world, because this is the day that everybody is protesting, what is happening is you are asking consent from your de facto government, your de facto corporations, to control the climate. They are getting you to consent to them continuing to control the climate. How in the world is protesting against something the same as giving consent? You're not making a lot of sense here. I also looked at the articles you linked below and they're mostly about people protesting in order to protect the climate from global warming. That's very, very different than what you're talking about here. Climate change isn't the same as climate control. But you know what I feel like you could say to make yourself sound more valid even though it's still wrong? The activists who are protesting against certain activities that damage the environment are indirectly giving consent to climate control. Wow, look, I make a better conspiracy theorist and I'm not even a conspiracy theorist. Not to mention that that argument would actually be more consistent to what you linked in your description box. Oh, and to that made up argument, I'd say not really. There are multiple ways to handle climate change and I'd say the majority of activists would focus more on not doing certain activities such as deforestation and moving to more renewable forms of energy. We can get to the topic of what we should do to combat climate change some other time, but for now I'm going to end the video here. Thank you guys for tuning in as usual. Shout out to Fireshard, Shere Khan, and Elia for being the top patrons once again. I'll see you next week.